So, uh, hello everyone. Andrew set the president, so I'm going to apologise as well. Um, so, I spent a week or so building a presentation, and then I came here this morning, and I spoke to a lot of people, and we had lots of discussions, and I thought, you know what? I've got the wrong presentation. So, from one o'clock, I spent a couple of hours building this new, this new one. So, it might be a little bit disjointed, but also, like Andrew, I'm, I'm, this is my first Ignite. But I hope, and my, my peers here have all said great stuff and there'll be more to follow. There's a lot around about what we should be doing, what we could be doing, but more often than not, that needs money. If it doesn't need money, it needs time and it needs resource, which is ultimately money. Maybe I may show you a way of getting that money. So, Disruptive. We talk a lot about disruptive in our space. It's a word, one of those words that's come up. Everything's disruptive. E-learning was disruptive in 2001. A lot of stuff is not disruptive, but I can tell you virtual reality is, and the apprenticeship levy is disruptive. So, 2D learning. We have been teaching, typically, all these hundreds, thousands of years in 2D, but we live in 3D. Now, that doesn't mean to say these aren't valid or right, but we need to look at it a different way. L&D budgets. Who has seen their L&D budget rise? Funny enough, no hands. Typically, they've been shrunk, but do you know what? There is great news, because your L&D budget has just gone up because of the apprenticeship levy. So any of those, any of you that are paying into the levy, your L&D budget has gone up. So break down the silos that we have lived in in learning and utilize this budget. And potentially we now have a new paradigm. So don't think about the levy as money just for apprenticeships. You can use it for your whole L&D function. So all that supporting learning that you might need to deliver, that levy could pay for it. So what if we could build these recognized training programs and they're accredited? What if they were more employer focused? Mindset, moving from bums on seats, there's been a lot of bad rap about apprenticeships, but we can now be valid. Here is a potential delivery model. This is something that I helped create, and I'm happy to share and give, but here's a typical model. And as you can see, these are all things that you are all doing every single day and have done for years. And let's not forget, you know, what's the fundamental elements of learning? Skills, behaviors, knowledge. And of course, we can incorporate all that element into a framework and utilizing apprenticeship levy monies to pay for it and the bigger piece. Now, let's not forget in the levy, in apprenticeships models, there's the 80-20 rule. 80% on program, 20% off the job. But the 20% could be all these elements, which again, you are already doing. Levy will pay for that. So, the trick behind it is not to look at it as a silo, as we've always done, it's now a tripartite model. That's the provider, that's you the employer, and you the learner. So we've moved from singular or double to tripartite. So on top of that, you might want to utilize newer technologies. But again, time, money, resource. Look at open source. Big fan of open source, I'm doing a big project right now. And with that open source, if you think about that whole ethos behind it, it's community driven. And I believe we are now in a phase, we're at the cliff, where we're moving away from vendor driven to community driven. So we will create, learners will create. So alongside that, what comes with that is virtual reality. So of course, VR is like the matrix. You don't know it until you try it. I still don't understand the matrix now, but I do understand VR because I've tried it. So. Lots of people say to me, it costs a lot of money. No, it doesn't. Think about e-learning. You use it for one application. VR, you can use for multiple applications. And you can use it all the way through the workflow. All the way through. You can use it for recruitment. You can use it for onboarding. You can use it as part of the skills. You can use it at the end. You can use it for showcasing. Multiple. So if you think about ROI on that one piece of content, it's far more than a piece of e-learning. Also what you can do with it, multiplayer. So it isn't just about me wearing a headset and a computer, and I'm just there playing in a great space, I'll be days. I can bring in other people from anywhere in the world or any locale, and they can all join me. So what does it mean, ultimately? 
we've now got a safe place, a safe place to fail. I'm probably feeling right now, so I don't feel very safe. But in VR, I'd be very safe. So we can work safely, we can practice, practice. That was raised by Neil. So what is success? So if we can practice and practice more and more, become more and more competent and better at our jobs, we'll start to see what success really looks like. And from a uh, corporate perspective, bottom line, top line. So, that's it all folks. My contact details are here. Thank you very much. Bravo.